welcome to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name's Will. Welcome, guys. Thanks for tuning in, listening, or watching how you're doing it. Podcast app, SoundCloud, or YouTube. Thank you. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Legram, the Instagram, Twitch, and Patreon. We stream every now and then. We don't have a schedule, so you just gotta kind of catch us in the act. Yes. Right. We also move all of our Twitch content, most of our Twitch content, most of it, over to YouTube, so you can watch mm -hmm. it there. Usually on the off days uh, yeah. from the podcast episodes, so on Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday, and then probably once or twice on the weekend, uh, we usually upload right. something just to give you guys some content on the in between days. Get to see some games. Get to see yeah. some sweet action from yeah. Parks and Alex. Yeah, Great and guys. Alex's new series. Uh, I say new; mm -hmm. it's been going on for like a week or two now. But yeah. um, it's really fun to watch. New-ish. Um, yeah, The Road to 100 Wins uh, with Alex is hilarious um, <laughs> because he's not anywhere close to 100 wins. <laughs> well, no. How many, what, what's his record? I honestly don't know. Um, it's, it's a losing <laughs> record. I know that much. Um, so I hope for his Look. sake that he wins and we don't, we don't get to do anything to him. But for our sake, I really want to like throw a pie in his face or something. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. which something's going to happen once he loses. We need him... <sighs> and I say once he loses because, I mean, let's be honest. Like, it's well, not hey. looking too good. We need him to agree <laughs> to terms before. We do. And he already... Uh, I've talked to him about maybe, it. I mentioned something to him. Maybe community suggestions That's would, not be, a bad idea. would be welcome. Yeah. What does Alex get? What does Alex get? If the we road... can't hurt him, no, so we're not gonna... in mind. I'm fond of the guy. He's a... I mean, he's all right. He's a great person, <laughs> and his family's wonderful. I don't know his family. I know him a little bit. I know I like very him. well. They're all great people. So I don't well, want to. I don't want to cause him bodily harm. Sure. Much of it. Much. Community, get to get to thinking. Get to thinking. What you? Um, what you thinking? Yes. What'd so you think about? before that, before we uh, we figure right. out what we're gonna do right. to him, uh, we do have our card of the day segment. Oh, as always, yeah. random card of the day. Last episode we had a very cool throwback to Betrayers of Kamigawa. Yeah. We'll see what we get this time in. Three, two, Dinkasek. one. Oh, no, okay. Well, that was a good one. Yeah, I love it. <coughs> Do you uh, want to? Sure. All right. Niv Mezit, Niv Mizit, excuse me, Draco Genius. I love that <laughs> Draco Genius is sweet. Draco Genius. So for six mana, two colorless, two blue, two red, you get a 5-5 five, five flyer that says whenever Niv Mezit deals damage to a player, you may draw a card. And then for one blue and one red, Niv Mizit, Draco Genius, deals one damage to target creature or player. It's awesome i mean yes. it's a solid limited bomb it's yep. not great and constructed unless you're doing oh. commander or something um it does make i think a decent commander i don't know i don't uh, play enough commander to really know but um, i don't know but you put it in the locust god uh or yeah vice versa. for sure um but i do really like yeah. this card i mean it's a classic he's you know one of the coolest yeah. dragons other than yeah, bolus and ugin um hey, but he's up there as one, one of the, the dragons coolest. Bolus hasn't killed yet. <laughs> um, but he is really nice. Uh, originally printed in Return to Ravnica. Um, no, he was printed in original Ravnica, right? No, it was a different version of him. Oh, you mean this card specifically? This card okay. specifically. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, his yeah. original card was in the original right, Ravnica. Right, right. But this yes. Draco this card is in Return. Is in Return. Uh, and then reprinted recently in Modern Masters. Which is cool. Oh, um, yeah. I ended up with a lot of them. <laughs> Did you really? I think so. Yeah. Um, but it is a cool card. I like him a lot. Card draw, uh, repeated pinging, uh, all good things. Seems sweet. Yeah. yeah. Very you could cool. effectively do do it three times next turn after you cast him. Yeah. Right. At least. I mean, hopefully you've got more mana. Yeah. But yeah, at least. I mean, you, um, you wouldn't. You want to play stuff. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that out of the way. Niv Mizzet's cool. Yep. That's all. Yeah. That's um, all right. So this is the standard episode. Yes. So what we thought we'd do, first of all, we have some hours of devastation stuff we're going to talk about later. But mm -hmm. before that, uh, you have some SCG yeah. uh, invitationals. Yep, that's right. To recap, I believe. Just a little recap coverage. <clears throat> talk about the state. Well, sort of the state of standard. Ours wasn't out when the invitational happened. Right. It was like a week later it came out, <laughs> which I think we could have planned better. But that's okay. Uh so this, it's not really going to be relevant, so we won't touch too much on the state, quote unquote, of right. standard. Um, we'll maybe talk about some speculation, but it's it's tough to say, right? A new set's change everything. Exactly. Yeah. So let's go into it, though. Um, we'll talk about the top eight decks first. Okay. And Kev already knows this. Maybe I should have done it in secret, because I like kind of picking your brain. 
okay. as to what won, what's good in the meta, and what not. Yeah. Um, but you already know, so that kills that. But let's just yeah. go over it. Okay. In eighth, we've got mono black zombies. Taking oh, eighth cool spot to see zombies. Eight. Oh, I don't yeah. think it's going to be around too much longer, actually. Uh, probably not, no. There shouldn't be too many in uh, yeah. Ixalan, so... Yeah. If it's, I if think it's time its, is coming. It's last leg now. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. I mean, kinda... it got some good cards in Hour of Devastation, so maybe. But like, I don't know. But that not good, good enough, enough to. Yeah, it's more it's just really like good. limitedly, like in a limited environment, it's good. But other than that, yeah, not even limited, limited isn't really. sealed really. Um, because yeah. I believe you still get Amon. Do you get Amon Kit packs in the sealed? Yeah, in the sealed you get two, mm-hmm. correct? Yep, four um, hours to Amon Kit. So you do get some of the zombies from Amon Kit, which I think combined with the newish ones are okay. It's not great. You have to get a lot of the good ones. <laughs> you draft, you draft uh, white black zombies, not mono black zombies. Yeah. Um, and even then, you need a lot of stuff to kind of make it work. Yeah. But yeah, they're doing all right yeah. right now. They're a tier one deck, but. Like, <laughs> like you're not gonna be su- well. No, you're not gonna be surprised if they take a tournament. Well, are you? yeah, I guess that's true. <clears throat> I mean, you could have. There are ways to tweak it and choices you can make that could push the deck over top. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it's coming to an end. Their time in the sun. Um. Seventh, green black energy. Okay. That will cool. Come, that will come up again. Yep. Um. Green black energy is a solid deck. Mm-hmm. Um. That seems to just swing in for tons of damage. Yeah. Uh. It. Kind of like the green red pummeler, but pummeler does it, I think, faster. Yeah, uh, it's just a little inconsistent. But pummeler's a sweet deck too. Mm-hmm. Uh, not in the top eight though. Uh, <laughs> sixth, Bant Delirium. I like this. Yes, I. This is not the deck I pulled the list for. I wish I had because Bant Delirium is tantalizing. Yeah. Uh, it was the only one in the top sixteen of decks, Bant mm-hmm. Delirium, uh, and I wish I'd looked looked into it. I wanted. I want to see how they're playing that. Sure. Because sure. that's. That's interesting. Seems cool. Um, then you get a uh, blue white monument. Mm-hmm. You know anything about this deck? Um, I've heard about it. Again, not being a standard player, I don't know much about it. But I have heard that it's a, a strong deck at the moment. Strong, decent, uh, kind of like zombies. Going to be tier one. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, mono black zombies in fourth. Wow. There you go. Okay. Uh, top four. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> the third place, uh, you get blue white control. It's Mazorius control. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Yeah, um, which is it's interesting. I I really like the tempo flash versions of mm-hmm. these decks running around the sort of spirits and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, the control variant. I mean, it's kind of really standard control, really. Yeah, I mean, nothing special about it. Blue white classic control colors mm-hmm. and yeah, it's nice. It's thing. nice to see that tried and true strategies can still take I do spots like in the that. top eight, it is right? nice and to the to the point of zombies it's cool to see tribal decks um mm-hmm. i really like the the variants that you get to see because some of the decks focus on tribal or some yeah. of the decks focus on just the archetype <laughs> control some of them focus on a specific mechanic energy things like that <coughs> um so it's nice to see that sort of variance across different kinds of strategies yeah. i i like that a lot okay yeah, yeah. i really like it too um the second place deck was Teamer Delirium. Okay. And I gotta say, I'm a little peeved. <laughs> Why you peeved, man? This ain't a Delirium deck. I mean, it is, but five cards in the deck say Delirium. That's it. Four of them being the same card? Yep. Traverse? Yep. And one of them being Ishkana. Ishkana. Yeah. That's it. I mean, yeah. But it is, Traverse is good and Ishkana is great. I know you're mad about it. You don't win with Delirium in this deck. <laughs> like, it's not a Delirium you deck. You can win with Ishkana. One of? I don't know. Uh, there's, get there. there's one in the sideboard. You can traverse for the Ishkana. Oh, man. You can do it once. <laughs> no, you... Well, yeah, you can do it once. Yeah, okay. you can do it once. <laughs> one spider. You only need it to work once. <laughs> one spider. It works if you want it to work. That doesn't work, though. <laughs> it's... Uh, I don't know. This deck is... Uh, I don't know. It just kind of feels like good stuff with Delirium in it. Yeah. Okay. And it was good enough to take second place in an Invitational. So. So it's really just the name you disagree with, though, right? Yeah. Just call it something else. I don't know. Team or junk. There you go. Because <laughs> that's a lot. I'm not, I'm not sure. It's it's interesting. Yeah, uh, I don't yeah. have the list for that because it didn't win, and we like winners. Um, <laughs> well, no, we always usually do the the first place deck. Yeah. So we'll yeah. get into that. Um, so the first place deck. Speaking of mm-hmm. green black energy. 
Okay. And Energy Jack took it. Interesting. Uh, I like it a lot. It's simple. It's refined. Um, repeatable. Yeah. Like, I don't know. There's nothing. I mean, I uh, like that. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing out of the ordinary there. So, the most played, though, in the tournament. I'll just talk about that for a second. The mm-hmm. most played decks were Teamer decks. Uh, Teamer Energy, specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, in the top 16, there were four Teamer Energy decks. One wow. Teamer, uh, what's the other one? Teamer Delirium. Yeah. Um, but none of the Teamer Energy top aided. Okay. Kind of should be known. Yeah. Um, that being said, we'll go into the deck list for the winning deck. Uh, so, Jadine, last name. I cannot say her last name, <laughs> and I don't want to try and offend anybody. That's funny. So I'm not going to. Um, her first name is Jadine. Yeah. J- Jadine. Uh, you can look it up on Star City Games, um, their coverage history. You can look it up on Goldfish. Uh, I just, I'm not really sure how to do it. <laughs> so we're going to avoid that. Uh, let's get into That's her so deck. That's funny. Let's get into her deck. Uh, yeah. She 2 0'd in her final match, which is sweet. That's cool. Uh, Good yeah, for her. It's dope. Uh, four Walking Ballista start us off. Yeah. Ballista, we've talked about it before, just being a stud. Yeah. You play it everywhere in every format. Yes. It's yeah. Freaking awesome. I think it has hit every format. It has. It? Yes. 100%. Yeah, it definitely has. It's in some vintage decks. It's an auto win for some decks. I yeah, think. it is. It's a win con. And um, we did a deck tech with Counter it. Company wins mm-hmm. with it. Um, there was a legacy or vintage deck, and I don't remember what it was. I don't remember either. Um, I'm gonna say that. But yeah, it is. It's hitting everything. It's I mean, it's just so good, right? Like so good. The fact that it like removal doesn't actually mean anything to that card. I love it. Like you I love play it, it as. A 2-2. Two, two. You're gonna hit for two, at yep. least, because you at least get to ping something. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, they can remove it, but you just wasted a removal it's spell. It's inevitable damage. Yeah. And we talked about inevitability. That's important. Yeah, it's really important. Um, In uh, the Tron decks, they get scary. Yes, they get huge. Walking Ballista is just a solid, solid card. Yeah, um, it's very, very good. It's almost like it makes so many things work, you you kind of wonder if the if it's gonna stick around yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the thing like i think it's fine in standard because it's not an auto win in standard it's just like a band-aid. i actually think it's mostly fine in modern except for encounter company well that's the thing it's an auto win like, in some decks encounter company <laughs> i mean <laughs> my favorite deck. like yeah. you have to do a lot there's like a lot of cards you have to get together yes. to make it work However, it's kind of easy to get them together because of Collected Company. Yeah, but that here's the so thing. is it. But so here's my question: Is okay. it Collected Company that needs to be banned? Ooh, uh, I hope, don't know. I hope you didn't say that. Uh, but that is a topic for another uh, day because that's a whole episode on its own. I mean, may, maybe this episode needs to turn into competitive magic, the competitive episode. <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> because I want to talk about modern now, so we're yeah, doing it. Yeah, modern's uh, very important. This is, this is our show, okay? We get to do what we want. Yeah. You guys just deal with it. We'll talk about standard in a second. I don't know. So, <laughs> Collected Company. Um, there are two cards right now that have you have an argument to ban, in my opinion. Okay. One's Collected Company. Death Shadow. Boom. That's the yeah. other one. Oh, well, that makes sense. Um, Yeah, Death Shadow. Just because it's everywhere. It's like eight. 16 or 18 yeah. percent i think right now of the meta Something i'm not like sure exactly the number but that being said there was a modern invitational um and it got beat yeah grixis death shadow got second against um affinity it also lost at one point to i think it lost at one point to white weenie what which i think is cool yeah that makes sense weenie. though honestly no it does it makes great sense yeah but like that's just awesome. <laughs> Unless Grixis doesn't have anything that gives Death Shadow trample, so they get to trump block for yeah. days. Uh, fatal push works excellently against White Weenie, but they flood the board so often that like kind of like, doesn't matter. And your fatal push <laughs> suddenly becomes more expensive because of Falia. Like, nice. Like Falia hoses a lot. Um, I love that. Yeah, I think it's great. It makes all the cantrips so much less good. I'm taking a White Weenie deck to the next modern event. There you go. Make White Weenie. I also really, really like White Weenie decks. Okay, I'm glad you said Dex at the end. White Weenie the, uh, lists. That's what I'm going to say. But yes, <laughs> I love White Weenie decks. They're so simple. They're so just straightforward, refined. Yeah. But in white, you get to do so much stuff. You do. That makes it competitive. Yeah. You get frontline medic, counter some things, 
Who plays Frontline? I mean, I, it's modern. just an <laughs> it's just an option. Is Who all does I'm saying. That? It's a good card though. It's not modern viable. You sack it, counter target spell unless they pay three. Frontline medic. I think. I don't think so. You do, or maybe it gives something indestructible. I think it gives something indestructible. I don't know. There's something with three. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. What are you even talking about? Hold man? the phone. What are you talking about? Hold your butt. Hold. <laughs> Keep holding it. <laughs> I, I'm very confused. Yeah, no, it's definitely not counter. Shut no, up. it's not counter. Why is my phone doing this? Frontline medic. Look at my format. You're doing great. No, it's totally dark. counter something. Hold on. <laughs> counter target spell with X in its name. That's the thing. Oh, that's Counter target spell with good. X in its mana cost unless it's controller brings three. So, no, it's not so name cards with X in their mana cost. Tor Ballista. Torment of Hailfire. Ballista. Thank you. I still don't think it's... <laughs> no, it's not. But I'm just saying, you have that option. Sure. In white, you get to do things that are sneaky and like that hose other things. Plus, you as we mentioned in, in our last episode, you run Aether Vial in White yeah. Weenie, which makes everything uncounterable, which is important. Bueno. And it's already cheap, so you just build Oh, out. the Endless One. That's another one. I don't know that Endless One hits many modern decks. It does. There's a few there's, Tron decks that play uh, this yeah, one. Yeah, a few, but it's Eldrazi generally Tribal. not run in it. But like, there is a deck, Possibility Storm. <laughs> I love this deck. Yeah. We're so off topic now. Don't care. It's fine. Possibility Storm, yeah. if you don't know, it's the funniest deck in the world. <laughs> so you just play Possibility Storm. Which basically states mm -hmm. that when you play a creature with whatever creature type, yep. instead of that creature resolving, you search your or you reveal cards from the top of your deck until you reveal a card that shares a creature type, and you play that one instead. So, <laughs> what you do, play Possibility Storm, uh, and there's ways to ramp it out with Simeon Spirit Guides, some of the rituals. Um, and then you play Endless One for nothing. <laughs> And then you search your deck, and the only other Eldrazi is Emrakul. So you just play Emrakul for nothing. <laughs> it's so good. No, it's not. It's not very good. But it is really cool. You like it. Free Emrakul. I have the pieces of that deck, so I I do have that deck, I guess. I haven't ever played with it, but it's cool. It would probably be just better. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't. Emrakul? Totally. Which yeah, one, but if way? you got there. The hey, original. Torn? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't play the... Not in modern. I mean, it hits modern occasionally, but it's not nearly as good as the first. No. Because it's, you're always cheating on Emrakul. You want to cheat on the best one. Yeah, of course. You get extra turns. I want extra turns. Yeah. And Annihilator. Yeah. I mean, that seems good. <laughs> like, I mean, if you get Emrakul out turn... How fast can that happen, you think? Turn two or three? Like, optimal. If you built the deck to like solely get out Possibility Storm... Yeah, that's all you're doing. Um, like you could get it out turn three i would say but like you also okay. you have to have the ramp you have to have the possibility storm and you have to have the endless one that's True. a lot to have to make that happen it's cool but you only have a one storm of endless five one. it's five it's three and two red that's not that bad though no but you only have one endless one <laughs> in the deck because you can only play one because if uh, you have another one and you I see. get yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> with possibility so you just hit would, another one. It would fizzle. Yeah. Okay. So it's very, you know, hit or miss. I uh, see. It's a problem. cool deck though. I Dang. like it. I like it less and less the more we talk about it. Yeah. So it's shut cool, up, though. Kevin. Um <laughs> back to standard. Yeah, we'll talk we'll talk <laughs> no, about standard. We're so now. off topic. Um we were talking about ballista before mm -hmm. and we got into banning. Um so ballista let's talk about banning ballista. I don't think that's gonna happen. No, definitely um, not in standard. No. There's no reason to. You maybe could, like... <sighs> it's just a good card in standard. Like, it just and that's, hits every deck. That's it's the fine. thing. It's never good enough on its own to be bannable. No, it's right? not. You ha it's so expensive to, to pump. So whatever mm -hmm. you pay it for, generally, it's going to stay. Uh, Unless not, you just have no other players. Yeah, yeah, not all the time. In. You Yeah, if, you, if you're top decking to have mana, pump yeah, your ballista. Duh. Um, but, like, yeah, I don't, it's going to stay around. Yeah, I think. no, it definitely is. It would shock me to my core. I'll quit magic if they ban Ballista. Get it on record, people. He said it. He's going to quit magic. It's here now. All right, we need to ban Ballista, don't, like, don't now. Ballista, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm switching to Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> four Glinsleaf <laughs> Siphoners. That's only funny because we talked about it earlier. <laughs> We're not going into that story. Go ahead. <laughs> four Glinsleaf Siphoners, because energy is awesome. Yep. Three Long Tusk Cub. Long Tusk Cub just being a 
again with inevitability gets bigger gets scarier sweet uh, um yeah four winding constrictors of course duh double ballista double anything with plus one plus one counters long toss cab it just adds so, one it doesn't double it oh does it add just one more mm-hmm. i thought it doubled it Darn. i played the deck at fm so that's the yeah. only reason i know because i actually hate standard but i do know that deck. all right well that's good no, i didn't know <laughs> it still is good though um, oh yeah it's, it's great i believe it's just one if i'm not mistaken all right i thought it was put that many but maybe it was i, I could know. be wrong uh Me so <laughs> for catacomb sifter which i think is really cool catacomb sifter is a two three for three gives you no draws he spawn that's really it um it's interesting against other creature strategies a go wide it's plus one but a go wide strategy is nice to kind of slow them down and yeah. you get eventual ramp with those uh eldrazi spawns if you don't want to use them for chump so i think catacomb sifter is actually a really good include yeah i like that a lot um two rich cars obviously legendary creature can't play more than one so might as yeah, well have you two. Only use two uh and they're solid gives things with plus one plus one counters bonuses yeah um they tap it's for mana, really right? really good uh yes if they have a plus one plus one counter they tap for mana and like i think you get three plus one plus one counters that you can distribute any way you want it's either two or three with rishkar with rishkar um and if you have constrictor out even just one constrictor and you spread those out across three different creatures they each get plus two plus two and then if you have another constrictor it just adds more and more so that all Mm -hmm. stacks it's just awesome yeah uh I like that there seems to be a marrying of green black energy and, and green black constrictor mm-hmm. um, because they were honestly so similar before they could go either they were, way yeah uh, for sure and you can easily make them complement one another which is I think what they're doing here mm-hmm. uh, what excuse me Jadine is doing here Jadine I don't know. I'm sorry uh, <laughs> three virtuous gear hulks nice as your bomb yeah um, three seems like a lot that's cool usually I think they run two uh, I'm I'm gonna, I don't think it just depends on the player. I've I seen so, four. Yeah. I have seen two. Okay. Uh, fair enough. You know, they're yeah. great. Uh, really, you're never unhappy to see them. Yeah. For five. That's fair. A four four with a bunch of counters everywhere. Yeah. Seems good. Yeah. It's great. Uh, four Nissa also run around in this deck. Makes sense. Yeah. Create plant or pump stuff. Well, That's really what so I've been doing. I actually ran at FM. I mm-hmm. ran into this where I put a plus one plus one counter on everything mm. with nissa and i had already made like three or four plant tokens nice and i had like two constrictors out and so everything with that one ability got plus three plus three and it because it's counters obviously it sticks around oh yeah it was insane like i was able to swing yeah. for a ton oddly enough i didn't win that game though um <laughs> it's okay they so guys this guy um oh was this the janky deck the sandworm convergence deck. yeah buddy what in the world it was a co- it was like a tokens copy deck that ran sandworm so convergence good. as the top end and they ramped into it very quickly oh, I love it. it was so dumb but it was i mean it was a cool deck like it was that fun. is aw- that and is the guy was really nice too that he is like, rogue brew at its finest that is exactly what i like to see at fnm you know what i mean Crisp. like i'm Can- guilty of playing the deck that was like supposedly just a good deck like green black is just good but like he just yeah. built his own silly deck and he, it was awesome like, yeah, that's really cool so, cool. so Ke- i'm not even finished with my round yet and kevin walks up to me he's got this look on his face that was so I'm, devastating I'm, I'm like how'd you do <laughs> i won the so the first game <clears throat> didn't go <clears throat> super well um it was fairly even for the most part but like he just he was quicker than I was. He had some of the creatures that like doubled tokens and things, and so he got sure. in for more damage. Second game, he just didn't draw the cards he needed. It when it misses, oh, it I misses know about hard. That. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. When that deck missed, it missed very badly, and so I was able to just swing and win very quickly. Um, That's why you need a plan B. You do need a plan B. Always have a plan B. Um, and then his third round, the third round was super like epic. I had yeah. a ton of creatures. He had a bunch of sandworms. And we were going at it, but the sandworm tokens started copying. And yeah, and then you yeah, can't, and then can't. I can't really do anything. A lot that. of five fives everywhere. Yeah. Suddenly. Yeah. Suddenly. It was rough. Yeah. It was fun though. It was that, a close game. That was the night I played uh, the Is It Mirror match. That was yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Woo! We didn't do anything for twelve turns. <laughs> was it really twelve turns? It was a lot. I don't know about twelve, but it was a lot. <laughs> we drew a bunch of cards. We land goad <laughs> like for a good. Um, no exaggeration probably six turns we didn't play a spell oh my gosh that's terrible yeah well this was match three and yeah yeah 
Oh. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Continue, my Sorry, friend. sorry, sorry. We're all getting sidetracked. It happens. For a tune with Aether. Okay, yeah. Yep. Four Fatal Push. Obviously. Checks out. Three Grasp of Darkness. Uh, yeah, good. Solid. I love Grasp. I think it's Grasp is great. Um, it sucks it hits everybody, but yeah, Grasp is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it is a straightforward, uh, really simple green-black deck. The synergies... Mm-hmm. Spot on. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, I was impressed with it. Um, All right, cool. Glad she took first. Uh, the deck is sweet. Yep. So yeah, let's go into some top played cards. Cards that'll stick around the meta for a little while. A little while. Uh, <laughs> first off, five pencil. The top played card. I mean, you thought it was fatal push. I and? thought so too. It's not. It's negate. Right. Played in fifty percent of the decks. Interesting. Is it not? Yeah. With all of your <laughs> is it? <laughs> uh, with all of your uh, is it decks, uh, teamer decks running around, negate just kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I feel though it's way more common in sideboards than main boards, um, just depending on the matchup. So, yeah. Because uh, with a lot of the green black decks, you, there's not a lot of spells to counter. I mean, sure you hit Nissa, the Fatal Push, a tune, but eh. yeah, at that point, is it super worth it? Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's good, but. I don't know. Uh, but let's go into most like second most played Fatal Push. Fatal Push. <laughs> uh, Fatal Push and actually Tireless Tracker as well. Tireless Tracker uh, and Fatal Push each in at 43% of the decks. Tireless Tracker is just so much better. So value. good. 3-2 uh, that gets bigger and you can potentially draw cards and yeah. all the stuff. And in green black you're going to get extra counters. <sighs> it gets bigger nice. very quick. Nice. Yeah. Tireless Tracker is exceptional. Yep. Um, uh, Attune with Aether ramp yeah. and free energy mm-hmm. boom done uh harness lightning burn yep. yeah and energy and then glory bringer all right these cool. are the three cards all in at 37 percent of the decks uh glory bringer <clears throat> cool it's it's kind of an enigma so when amaket first came out a bunch of people started playing with glory bringer and then kind of dipped yeah now we're seeing it kind of spike up again uh, Glory Bringer's value is kind of always in constant question. Can you take it out for this card or this card? I don't know. Right. Uh, one of the conversations at the pre-release we had was, do you take out Glory Bringer in Is It Control for the Locust God? And I am not crazy about that idea. Yeah, I'm not either. It's, Glory Bringer comes out a turn earlier. It deletes things. Yeah. The Locust God needs a lot to set it up. Yeah. Glory Bringer's too good. I'm not upset with the Locust God in those decks. No, not at all, but I don't think it replaces Glory Bringer. No, it doesn't replace really anything. No. That's what I'm say. I don't think the Locust God specifically is all that great in standard. No, um, it's really not in standard. Um, it's going to hit some other formats. If they can break Commander, it. Commander, but like. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just too expensive. <laughs> I think you're going to get to break it in something. I don't in know somewhere, what yeah, yeah. Something. But I don't know. Something. All right, so uh, <laughs> negate Rogue Refiner, thirty-one percent of decks, along with Servant of the Conduit, in thirty-one percent of decks, which kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. You usually play those together mm-hmm. um, in a lot of teamer builds. Magma Spray at thirty-seven percent is just some solid uh, removal. Yep, it's nice. You can't go wrong with Magma Spray and Chandra Torch of Defiance in at forty-three percent. Nice. Yeah, ties Very cool. ties with Push and uh, that other thing. Tireless Tracker. Thanks. Cool. Um, yeah, Chandra is making a little resurgence. I like Chandra a lot. I do too. Torch of Defiance is good. Yeah. Um, Man also hits moderns and Jund and things like that. Oh, sweet. Um, which I think is cool. Yeah, yeah. she's a fun card to play with. I, I very, greatly very enjoy good. playing with Chandra. Um, Pretty overpowered for four. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, talking about the state of standard, again, this is kind of it's yeah. old, it's old news, technically. Um, but it's in a healthy spot. I think so. Right? The top Finally. eight top eight is varied. You don't see more than two decks in the in this top eight anyway. Um it looks like the banning finally. The banning spree hopefully Whew. is over. Man, I hope Whew. so. Um it was just yeah. so I mean, first it was what, Mardu vehicles, then it was Aetherworks. And, and it was like, Mardu, by the way, top sixteen, not top eight. I okay. thought Marty would come in a lot stronger. Um, it seems people just kind of found the answers for it. It looks like other decks caught up is what it amounts to. Uh, it's it's either that or now that uh, <clears throat> Marvel is out because mm-hmm. people had a tool to play against Marvel. Yeah, you don't have to do that anymore, and 
you can kind of focus on your strategy instead of answering one. Yeah. And Mardu, I don't know. Yeah. Doesn't it doesn't keep up doesn't now with green and black well. yeah, yeah. and other team or decks? So that's fair. Yeah. Um. Well, cool. Yeah, I'm glad to see a hopefully healthier standard now from here on out. It is wide open. We'll see how it um, goes. Alexander uh, Mangucci weeks ago, um, pretty much, I think the week after Marvel got banned, mm-hmm. made a video on Channel Fireball just imploring people to play standard. It's safe now. Yeah, it it's seems good. like it. Cool. It's fun, Kevin. Mm. Um, speaking it's of... It's magic. There's no, there's no yeah, bad magic. Yeah, I mean, magic. I like magic. Well, I, um, I said there's no bad magic. There is bad magic. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so... <laughs> good segue um sponsored Freaking. by grand slam we got another box of hour of devastation Freaking. that we were able Freaking. to use Freaking. for our own little sealed Freaking. event like sealed. we Freaking. usually do Freaking. when a new set comes out Freaking. are you good you good what i don't even notice i'm doing it um, yeah i'm fine so i'm great with all the new sets uh with amon Ket, at least because it's only been two new sets now um, what we've been able to do, thanks to Grand Slam, uh, is get a box, basically split the box, and do a half and half sealed uh, event just and between the two of us. We know that that is not how you do sealed. Yes, this so is just for the fun of it. It's going to be super skewed. That is a too big of a card pool. Absolutely, to really get um, any good data. But but we did get to it's what fun. I like about it um, is you get to sort of pick the synergy that you want to go for Mm -hmm. Um, because again in limited as we talked about with our tips on limited and drafting uh, synergy is really important sure and when you get the bigger card pool again it's not perfect but you do get to play those synergies a little bit more thoroughly because you're going to get more of those payoff Mm -hmm. cards Um, and so for me it was a way to first explore hour of devastation because i had not played it yet you had played the pre-release and so we got to just sort of get into it a little bit and see what we could do um Again, we each got half the box, so yep. uh, eighteen packs each, <laughs> which is three times what yeah. you get in normal uh, sealed. Yep, exactly um, that. Without Amonkhet as well, so yes. it was solely just ours. Um, and <clears throat> basically, what I decided to go for was black green, uh, which seems to be the theme of this episode. Um, yeah, it's solid. The reason being, so I sort of, as you always do, split everything into colors, uh, things like that. And I ended up with three of the Obelisk Spiders, uh, which I just feel is a really strong card. Uh, For three, it's a 1-4 with Reach. Whenever it deals combat damage to a creature, put a negative one, negative one counter on that creature. And then whenever you put one or more, one, one, negative one, negative one, I have to say negative specifically, counters on a creature, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So it's a drainer. Um, and when I had three of them, they got to stack. I like it l- a lot less than the Amonkhet flagship for green black. Uh, yes, um, I agree, but I do like that this is cheaper. It's good, yes, but that card, I feel as though it gets you way more. Oh, I think so. It's um, a better payoff. Um, yeah, I think this plays. Well it is a for, good engine, though. It's yeah, solid. it's it made for a very solid mid range sort of engine deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's really good. And so I really like that. It worked very well with my one of Emmet Eternal. Uh, I which, love that card, dude. Yeah, this card is great for two and a black. It's a 5-5 five, five with Afflict 3. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, put a negative 1, negative 1 counter on it. Uh, whenever it deals damage to a player, remove all of the counters from it. Yeah. Um, and that worked great with the spider because yeah. anytime counters were put on stuff, I got to drain. Uh, so that made your spells ideally a little worse. And in fact, mm-hmm. in the second game, First, first game, game first game first game um you were at literally one life which i could have killed you the turn before and just didn't yes um should have it should have but you played a card you stole a card mm. oh yes you is. stole a card from my deck but you couldn't play it because he would have killed himself because i had this combo out yeah so it was kind of a cool little interaction there i just really like that yeah um as early creatures i had ruin rats as a playset because you death play touch things with good. death touch and limited <laughs> just um, do it trust me super good you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> um i also had two of tenacious hunter which just played to the negative one negative ones it's a four four for four uh, if it has the negative one counter on it, it gets Vigilance and Death Touch. Again, yeah, play the best, Death Touch and Limited. Yes. Trust me. Um, I had a one of Quarry Beetle, which played with my one of Ifner Deadlands, uh, which basically I could tap it in four other lands, uh, sack a desert to put two negative one, negative one counters on target creature and opponent controls, again, playing to that, and then sure. get it back with the Quarry Beetle, mm-hmm. uh, which made for some good synergies. I also had a couple other cycling deserts, so I was able to pull those back. Sure. Um, Sifter Worm is an all-star. Uh, trample 7-7 seven, seven for 7. 
Ooh, a bomb. When it enters the battlefield, scry three, reveal the top card of your library after you do that, and you gain life equal to that card's converted mana cost. So it, it provided some longevity and was just a bomb. Um, and then a card that I never got to play, but I really wanted to, is Razageth. Uh, actually pulled a Razageth, didn't get to play it, but it would have been super cool. Um, with all those creatures, this only really came up once, but I did have a one of overcome uh, as a way to sort of get in those last points of damage. Mm-hmm. My deck was more draining and like ping for one as much as possible. And so this was a way to close out the game. Uh, And in fact, in one instance, I played it and it would have won, but you were able to get around it. Um, I just countered it. You just countered it. Um, But it was a very cool card. I really like it a lot. It's Um, good and limited. Yes. Uh, As far as removal goes, I had a one of Lethal Sting. Again, playing with the one negative one, negative one counters. Uh, Put one on a creature you control, destroy target creature. Pretty good. Uh, Torment of Venom. I believe I had two of these, uh, just great with the negative one, negative one counters, uh, and it gave the extra bonus. Yeah, of they're great. Either three life or stacking a permanent or discarding a card. They're awesome. Um, and then probably my favorite removal spell uh, slash hand destruction spell is Doomfall. Um, this card is amazing. I had two it's of really them. It's really good. Yeah. Two in a black. Uh, choose one as a sorcery. Target opponent exiles a creature he or she controls, uh, which... I didn't really care when I played this, which you chose most of the time. No, um, you, it didn't no. really matter. Uh, but I think more times than that, I played it as a hand destruction. Target opponent reveals his or her hand. You choose a non-land card from it, and you exile that card. And I like the exile. That's super important in this set because mm-hmm. um, there are cards that sort of come back. The eternalized thing is a, is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, the gods are also a big deal. So all good ways to remove that. So Yeah, exiling is always I really Preferred. liked my deck. Uh, we won't say the wins yet. We'll let Owen you three. go through. Owen three. <laughs> uh, Owen so three. <laughs> it's really easy to beat someone who floods three games. Yeah. I'll just point that out. He's a little unhappy. I am. It's so frustrating. <laughs> I forgot to include card draw. I didn't forget. I didn't think I needed card draw. Mistake. I tried to play to a tempo game. You need card draw. Yeah, you need card draw. Uh, so, yes, I flooded three games in a row. It was appalling. And very upsetting. Um, it was kind of fun. <laughs> very appalling. Um, so much so that in game one, I hard casted Nicol Bolas <laughs> and true. still had open mana. Let me just say, <laughs> oh. seven and still had two open mana. So, yep, Nicol Bolas is fun to play with. Let it be yes, um, and I will say when you played it, I like immediately thought, okay, I might actually lose now because I was in a really commanding position yeah but then you played him and i was like crap like that could swing the game it didn't uh no it definitely (laughs) did not um so yeah it's uh i didn't get to play my deck (laughs) played a lot of lands that's for sure um what other good cards did you get (laughs) uh torment of hailfire is that card was great very solid very solid um when i played it i was kind of desperate for plays uh didn't get amazing value uh, it's really good if you're trying to... So this is... It's a card that's awesome for certain circumstances. Yeah. So if you want to clear the board, kind of wait until they don't have that many cards in hand. Mm-hmm. If you want to get rid of their hand, all right. Yeah, then you yeah. just play it then. Or if you just want to ping it for damage, if you've just cleared their board and they've got a few cards in hand but not a ton, two black and one X it gets its effect. Repeat the following process X times. Each opponent loses three life unless that player sacks a non permanent or discards a card. I love Torment of Hell. I like it a lot. It's um, sweet. It's really, really good at, like, when you played it, you played it for four, I yeah. believe. Mm-hmm. Um, which, like, again, like you said, you didn't have very many other plays, so it wasn't the optimal no. timing. Yeah. But it felt bad on my end because I ended up losing six life and then discarding two cards mm-hmm. and I only had three cards in hand. Yeah, there's never... It sucks to get tormented. It really Tor- sucks. Tormented. I was afraid of that card because I knew you had it in it's, there. It's um, such a great, so great card. Good. Um, it's going to see constructed play. Yeah, I, think I so. imagine. I think it could be in other formats. Like, it's great. Torment's a powerhouse. Yeah. Um, unsummoned to b- b- it's unsummoned. Bounce things. Play it unlimited. Mm-hmm. It's great. You're welcome. Uh, the Scorpion God's another card <laughs> I would have loved to play if I drew less lands. <laughs> um, I ended the game each time with seven to nine lands on board. Yeah, I had like five to six sometimes. 
God other times, bless. You know, I had I had like seven or eight a couple times. I played Sifter Worm like twice. Ugh. Yeah, it was a little rough. It was I'm awful. Sorry. I'm really. It was sorry. awful. It was a crappy magic. That's all. But, uh, that's bad magic, by the way. Is when your deck controls you. That's fair. You say control makes you not play magic. Drawing four <laughs> lands in a row makes you not play magic. Um, yeah, I won <laughs> three times. Yeah, it felt good. I don't know For if me. you've noticed this about Kevin. I'm a douche. <laughs> After he says things, he laughs. I do constantly. It's re- I laugh a lot. So guys, we're like forty five. We play episodes magic. In. He does a thing and giggles about it. I do. It I'm is the sorry. most. Inf- I'm a child. Infuriating, upsetting, <laughs> blood curdling, bone breaking thing to experience. <laughs> it and feels good on my end. This I'm is honest. my best friend. Um. Yeah, guys, it was fun. <laughs> we have one more segment, one more thing. My pack is amazing. I just peaked. Did you peek? I'm sorry. You're I didn't it. actually mean to, but it's really good. Quote Kevin Lissy. Um. So he's what is a your douche. Goal card, my friend. Uh, my goal card is I've forgotten the name. I'm so worked up. Uh, Wildfire Eternal. Yeah, that. Um, it's great. I'm gonna play it in. Is it control? Maybe. Um, I hope it works. You got yeah. it, didn't you? No, I did. Did you get it? Oh, thank God. Um, I did get Ooh. something way better. I would um, hate it if you pulled my card. So I'm going yeah. for the Romanap Excavator. Roman Rahaman. That Raman- thing. Raman- um, Crucible of Worlds on a stick. I did yeah. not get it, but I kind of don't care at this point. So mm. I got two oh. rares. Oh. Well, one rare and one mythic. Foil mythic. Nice. Um, I got the Scarab God foil pretty good which i know for a fact is like a 30 dollar card at the moment so i'm happy with that um oh. i also got an hour of revelation which is just a good removal spell or sweeper sorry um my three uncommons would also be like highlights of my pack mana core eternal is great in an aggressive deck sun scorched champion is also good and sort of uh just creature based sort of low to the ground deck uh that gets through for some damage yeah and then Eternal of the Harsh Truths is also just a decent blue card. Gives you some card advantage or deals some damage, that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm going to pick the Scarab God. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, you pick the God. You pick the God. <laughs> like <laughs> Done. Play them. You're welcome. So I'm happy. I'm good. Um, <laughs> Holy crap. So I got Hollow One. I like Hollow One, not in Limited so much. I think he's honestly better in Limited. Really? Like, yeah. Maybe so. I don't know. <sighs> I, I don't love him. He's a 4-4 four, four for 5, and 4 is nice, mm-hmm. and you can get him down relatively quick. He costs yeah. 2 less for each card you've cycled or discarded. So in some decks, he can turn on really easily and yeah. just come down as a free 4-4, four, four, mm-hmm. or at least a 4-4 four, four for like 2. It's nice. It's a build around. Yeah. Well, 4-4 four, four for 1. You keep getting build five. around cards as your rares. Uh, what was my last one? It was the, oh, it was the cycling sarcophagus, card. Sarcophagus. Yeah. Yep. Well, if I got these back to back. I mean, yeah. Back to back. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, he's all right. I don't I don't think I'm going to pick him. Def- I don't think so. Yeah. Um, that being said, I have a Striped Riverwinder, which I would might probably pick. Uh, it's a 5-5 five, five with Hexproof for 7 with 1 Cycling. It's blue. I love that card. I do, too. Um, it's weird having a fatty in blue as my bomb. I try to go for like green or red big guys because I feel like you get more and they're cheaper usually, but yeah. they're easier to the get. The hex proof is the really good. Though. That's that's why he's um, for sure. I think probably a lot better. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably what I'm gonna go with. My pack is kind of weak. Okay, fair. No, yeah. I really like that card. I actually don't think Hollow One is terrible. Um, solely because it's not. I just don't like. I just don't feel like four is good enough. Well, so here's my thing. Um, even if you have a cycler. Uh, you know, you cycle him and or you cycle a card and then he becomes a four four for three, which mm-hmm. is good stats. Um, if you cycle twice, he becomes a four four for one. And I know that's sort of like mm-hmm. iffy, but cycling is relatively prevalent. No, yeah. Um, and to me so, it, it comes down to are the cards I'm cycling worth more or less than a four four? Yeah. Because once he hits the board, he's vanilla. Well, yeah, so, yeah, no, absolutely. Am I cycling like my river winder mm. okay maybe a turn what two three whatever it is yeah okay i could kind of buy that if you can get him out turn three if you've got two one mana cyclers in yes so that's that's saying a lot yeah it is but i mean a four four on turn three 
pretty good. There's, but there's I agree, so much it's removal very situational. And, yeah, um, I just I don't know. It just seems like it's a lot of work to get it. And well, that's, that's the thing. It's not that much work. It just once it hits the board, it's just a four four, which is great. But <laughs> I don't know. But a five five hex proof is way better. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I I think so. Now you are hard casting. Well, yeah, but... of course. But you do also get the the draw or the the out of cycling yes. it if you needed to. Yeah. So. I also have ambuscade removal. Yeah. Quality. All right. Sweet. Yeah. Well, I'm stoked. I got the foil scarab guy. Nice. <laughs> and I think like. Didn't we each get an hour of revelation in our sealed stuff? You had one. I think I had one. I don't remember. Um, I so don't this know. is, I guess, the third hour of revelation. Anyway, cool card. I Not. Know. I mean, it's whatever. Um, all right. Rambling, because I do that. I do. It and does. then I laugh about it. Um, Guys, <laughs> we're getting out of here. My name's Kevin. <laughs> Sorry to end it like that, but we are. We're getting out of here. <laughs> Say it again. Wait, wait, wait. I have to say huh? really quick. We forgot to huh? mention. Thank you to Grand Slam again. Oh, geez. We should always thank them at the end of the videos yeah, because I'm they've sorry. done so much. They um, have. They sponsor a lot of things for us, and we yeah. really appreciate that. Again, for the crack pack and for the sealed box yeah. that we were able to do uh, the episode thank on, you. we really that appreciate really cool. that. So, yeah. thank you to Grand yeah, Slam. Big appreciated. Cool things coming with Grand Slam in the future. Stay on the lookout. Spoiler alert. Stay tuned. We'll plug that here just a little bit. Yeah, later. we'll Stay wait tuned. To, we'll, just be aware. Yeah. Be aware. Yeah. Um, also, for our 500 follower giveaway, we do pick winners tomorrow. Uh, oh, man. So make sure you That's get your entry in. Um, yeah. We've already got like 80-something entries, Gosh. so hopefully you'll get your That's name really in. Cool. Hopefully you, you already do. Thank you, thank you for the yeah. participation. It, it feels we've good. gained so many followers thanks to all of you guys. Um we're, it's, we're trying to grow a community, okay? Exactly. And the community is really, really responding well. Thank so you. So we Thank really you. appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for uh, commenting on Deck Tech videos, suggesting things for us, yeah, participating in those weeks. questions, uh, participating in giveaways. That's really fun just to give something to somebody. It is fun. And it, it would even be cool if it was just three people. But the fact yeah. that it's like 83 people. It's great. That feels good. Um, so. And, you know, yeah. from our first giveaway where we had something like 15 or 20 entries, it feels a lot yeah. better to have, you know, something like 80 right now. That's a huge growth for us. And so I we, agree. We wouldn't have that without you guys. So Magic thank you community. very much. Thank you. You're the best. Rally into the cry for free cards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't, right? <laughs> um, anyway, yes, I think we are going to get out of here finally. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for watching. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. This has been It Resolves. May you draw well and not too many. <laughs>